Typically we go to the Keys for the first part of the lobster season, the mini season, and right there in July and August. But this year we had the opportunity to go down to the Keys in December. It's something we've never done before so we didn't really know what to expect. We kind of started off lobstering like we normally would in the summer. We uh, put the ski ropes out and used the boat to pull the divers um, over some good numbers and some good area. And um, it was kind of slow at first, we weren't really finding a whole lot down there. One of the issues we had was our GPS went out um, back in September before we went down to the Keys. For some reason, uh, you know, it just went dead. So we lost all our holes, so we had to uh, convert back to the uh, old style of uh, hunt and find. We did some storms, so the water's a little murkier, but we'll see if we can find some lobster and some fish to spear. So what we did throughout the trip was we just go out each day and uh, catch some lobster. Um, try to get, you know, as many as we could within our limit. And um, just, you know, kind of a little more relaxing. You know, this time of year it's not as uh, crowded on the water as in the summer. Pretty much the only people watching down there that time of the year. Now usually, after the first few days of regular season, it gets hard to find, you know, keeper lobster. So I was kind of expecting there not to be many lobster this time of year. But I actually saw quite a few, a lot more than I expected. Now some of them were really small, I mean like micro, and then there were a lot that were barely too small to keep. But still, there were even a lot of, plenty of uh, keeper lobster too. So I was surprised by just how many lobster I saw. So we weren't doing real well in the shallower spots. So we moved on to some of our deeper ledges. And that's when we started finding some more. Uh, the deeper spots were a little closer to the bridge and we'd just uh, find the ledges and we'd put on our tanks and we'd go down and start working on with that. So that really helped. And um, not being pulled through the water kept us a little warmer because the water was rushing in. Yeah, I seen a big one. Uh, so, uh, one of the things you might expect uh, is the difference between lobstering in July, August versus lobstering in December is the water's a little colder. I think uh, high 80s, maybe low 90s during the summer months, and like low 70s here in December. Another thing that was tough too is, is when you're pulling someone with a wetsuit on. Problem is, the water wants to rush into the wetsuit, pushing all the warm water out and making it cold. So that made it a little more chilly even with the wetsuit. Jumped in the water one day and thinking that it was the 90s when I went down in July. And then uh, I was uh, unpleasantly surprised to say the least. Oh. Woo. Oh. <laughs> Holy dude! <laughs> It'll get better. It, it, you get used to it, trust me. That cold water hit me and uh, took my breath away as they say in the movies. We got out to the spot and my dad and my brother started lobstering um, initially in some of the some of the good ledges we found kind of close to the bridge. It was nice and calm and, and everything was going good. You know it's a good sign when they ask for the tank. I think they got a good hole. Any thoughts, Mom? No. Carries the lobster, will you get them with the flashlights? Yeah. Well, the flashlight that's even better. Deep hole. <laughs> so we get to this one hole late in the afternoon, I want to say maybe right before dark. And um, we're working a spot, we find a real nice bottom. It's got just multiple holes in between some pylons. And so uh, the tide was starting to pick up and I needed to stay down longer. So I went up there and told Jeremy, let me just put your tanks on. 
My dad didn't have heavy wetsuit, he just had the, the jacket wetsuit. And it kind of led to a situation because I had a pretty heavy wetsuit, a 7 mil with a 5 mil jacket, and it had a lot of weight, you know, because those wetsuits are real buoyant. So I had a lot of weight. While I'm down there working on the lobsters, my uh, gauge got blasted behind me from the current. I was actually having to hold on to the bottom. And I went that deep, maybe eight or nine feet, just something to give me some air to work it for a long amount of time. Take a breath one time, and I was thinking, well, I'd just get up to the top and uh, hang up around the pylon, but the current was going really bad. So I keep up, and it's extremely heavy, the, the, the vest and everything. I'm like, man, something ain't right, the thing's so heavy. So I kick up, and when I get to the top, the current starts blasting me around the pile as I tell uh, Jeremy and Celeste, come get me. I said, and I can't hang on here much longer. And uh, so the current blasts me around the pile, and I get on the backside. Fortunately, there's a little eddy in the backside. And I was holding on, but I was literally gripping it with my, almost with my fingernails, just trying to hold on, not to, not to blast away. I look down and take a lot of lobster, I look up and I don't see him anymore. I look behind me and I don't see him. So I go up and to the surface because it's only rolling three feet underwater right now. Uh, and look back behind me and I see him holding onto the back of the platform. So I was quickly scrambling, pulling down rods out of the T-tops and, and we, we run the boat through and uh, almost broke the antennas. They were bowed way back. But we got to the other side. By that time, Christopher came up and I uh, was able to inflate the BCD. Had we had the tower on the boat, I'd have probably been in big trouble because he could have got up on the other side of the pilot and come get me. I recall the, the scene from Top Gun when they were talking about one of Maverick's fights during a little classroom thing and they were basically saying, you know, it worked out, but it's an example of what not to do. It's kind of, that's about how this situation went down. It's definitely something you really want to pay attention to and yeah, be careful about. But overall, it was a lot of fun lobstering down in the Keys in December, and there were plenty of lobster down there still. It's pretty cool to see how the fisheries change over the different seasons, and um, it was still great, you know, even in that time of year. So if you're down in the Keys in December, uh, plenty of lobster still there, just give it a try and maybe bring a good wetsuit. So, thanks for watching the video, guys. See you next time.